How you doing, everybody? We're here for another discussion. I'm Aaron Thompson, Nevada Council on Problem Gambling, talking today with Ted Hartwell, Nevada Council on Problem Gambling. Um, September is National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, uh, forgive me. Um, and with that, we wanted to talk about um, suicide and how it relates to problem gambling. Um, Ted, if you'd briefly introduce yourself, please. Hi, I'm Ted Hartwell. I'm the Community Engagement Liaison for the Nevada Council on Problem Gambling, uh, among many other things, and I'm happy to be here today. Happy you're here. Um, one, of the, one of our messaging when we're out at community events, um, especially suicide awareness events, um, which we try to attend as many as possible, um, that issue is very close to us. Um, one of the, the messages we carry is one in five. Um, we'll often carry pendants like this one that say, ask me why, one in five. Um, and would you care to explain what we mean by that and what the one in five messaging is? Absolutely. So uh, this is a very important discussion in that um, sometimes you'll hear people minimize the potential uh, effects of problem gambling, even joke about it sometimes and say, well, at least uh, problem gambling uh, can't kill you, uh, like some of the other addictive errors. But in fact, that's, that's simply not true. And uh, problem gambling actually has a higher suicide rate than any other addictive disorders. It's, it's right near the top of uh, all mental disorders in terms of its suicide rate. And approximately one in five people uh, who develop a gambling disorder uh, actually uh, attempt suicide uh, uh, or have a, a significant ideation. The majority of the rest uh, actually have begun to uh, think of it as a way out of their uh, problems. So it's something we need to treat very seriously when we uh, have a uh, friend or a loved one um, develop a gambling problem, we should treat it every bit as seriously as we do a, a substance use disorder. In what way are the, so you have risk factors, risk factors for problem gambling, risk factors for suicide. Um, a lot of those risk factors can be very similar. Um, do you mind elaborating on that? Yeah, that's absolutely true. There's a lot of overlap. Uh, between general risk factors for suicide um, and uh, for problem gambling. Uh, and some of them include uh, a recent loss, whether that is uh, of a job, a retirement, or a relationship, for example. Um, often this is an initiator of a gambling problem, something that was just recreational before now becomes a way to kind of escape from that worry or trouble. Uh, there's often a history of trauma or abuse. Um, there is often a co-occurring mental disorder of, of some kind. Uh, uh, depression is very common. Uh, a history of uh, other impulsive or risk-taking behavior can be there. Low self-esteem, um, financial problems, and of course financial problems are often one of the first indicators um, that there may be a, a gambling problem uh, present. But um, this is often an indication of, of many other factors in the person's life that, um, that the person is starting to use gambling uh, as, as, again, uh, an escape from, from the pain those things are, are causing. And also, uh, and also very importantly, uh, there may be a, a, a family history of substance uh, use disorders or uh, mental illness. And so a lot of those are um, uh, risk factors for uh, anyone who may develop suicidal ideation, but they're particularly acute for people with problem gambling. Um, while the research behind the exact why of that is not well developed, um, anecdotally, I suspect it's because uh, in, a, in a situation where there's uh, a problem gambler in the family, uh, it's uh, very easy for that person to hide that particular addictive disorder for a long time. In fact, we often refer to problem gambling as the hidden addiction. And sometimes the family has no idea that um, there's any issue at all. And they can go from not knowing anything's wrong to suddenly finding out that um, the kid's college education is fun, fund is gone, the retirement fund is gone, and by the way, we're gonna lose the house next week. And it can be such a, a traumatic event in the family, it's very easy 
for the person with the gambling disorder to rationalize, my family is better off in this world without me in it. And of course, there's nothing that's further from, from the truth. But that's, uh, uh, that's an anecdote I've heard shared by uh, numerous people in the recovery community. Kind of eerie talking about these uh, warning signs. Um, I, I know we just did a video on COVID and and the environment with COVID, and it yeah, I mean it sounds a lot of that stuff is everything everybody's going through right now, just experiencing um, all the problems of living in the world of COVID and loss of job. Being a person in long term recovery, um, have can you do you mind talking? Um, about any suicidal ideations you might have had and is that common? I think people sometimes overlook um, suicidal ideations or thoughts. Um, sometimes we focus on the act and committing the act um, and sometimes we might overlook how detrimental those thoughts can have, um, just having those thoughts and dealing with those thoughts. Uh, absolutely. Um, I was actually uh, one of the minority who had not gotten to the point of suicidal ideation in my uh, uh, gambling disorder. Uh, I, I can say that at the very back of my mind, um, you know, it had popped into my mind. But uh, at that point in time, I think I was still thinking rationally enough to kind of carry the effects of that forward. If I were to go through with something like that, what the effects of that a suicide would be uh, on my family uh, and friends and recognize uh, how, how devastating an effect that would have. And in fact, um, even though the, the person with the gambling disorder may, may think that that's a way to end their pain and end the pain that they're possibly causing their family, uh, in fact, suicide is a really awful gift that keeps on giving multi-generationally. I believe the research indicates that when there's a, a suicide in the family that uh, for both the current generation and two generations afterwards, the suicide risk within that family uh, does uh, rise significantly. So that's the, you know, not a, a legacy that you want to uh, leave for anyone that you care about. And I think the most important thing uh, to recognize is uh, while um, suicidal ideation is very high with this illness that um, uh, treatment is very available and treatment is very successful to people who will engage in it. So knowing that those resources are out there, um, that they are uh, free in the state of Nevada uh, for uh, Nevada's citizens, um, not only for individuals who uh, may have the gambling disorder, but also for family members who may be struggling as a result of somebody else's uh, gambling that those resources are available free of charge in the state of Nevada. Yes, most definitely. And if anybody would like more information on that, you can always go to our website, whenthefunstops.org, um, call the 24 hour helpline 1-800-522-4700. Um, and with that, with September being um, National Suicide Aware Prevention Awareness Month, um, I do want to highlight the Nevada Coalition for Suicide Prevention. Um, we work with them a lot. They do wonderful work here in the state. Um, their website is nvsuicideprevention.org. Um, and I do want to mention that um, in the month of September, they usually have a walk in memory, walk for hope um, that we attend every year. This year, they're doing it virtually. But if anybody um, would like to take part, they are accepting donations. Um, it's the fourth annual uh, no, 14th annual Walk in Memory, Walk for Hope. It'll be Saturday, September 12th. Um, and I'll leave a link in the description. Um, and then I would be remiss if we didn't mention the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, 1-800-273-TALK. Um, That's 1-800-273-8255. And their website is suicidepreventionlifeline.org. And um, I will leave that in the description as well. Um, thanks again for talking with me, Ted. And um, until next time, sir. Thanks, Aaron.